So I'll say at this school, we want the student to speak more than the teacher. I mean, doesn't that right there speak volumes? That's going to let them know what the expectation is. So today I want to talk to you guys about classroom management teaching ESL online. And this is something that people ask me about a lot. So obviously that's why I want to share some tips with you guys. One of the first things I want to talk about is getting students to speak because oftentimes in Chinese culture, they are taught to have more of that lecture style and sit, listen, don't ask questions, just take notes and study for that test. It's all about, it's kind of rote memorization and then studying for the test taking the test, repeat. <laughs> Listen to the lecture, study, take the test, repeat. If your student is not speaking, and I've read quite a couple books about this, talked with students about it who studied in the US and in China, and the books and the people, what they say is it's it's definitely cultural. So here in the in Western culture, we want our students to be active learners and then in China it's more like passive learners. So when we say active learners it's saying that means that we want students to participate and answer questions and say things like or ask them questions like so what do you think about this or how do you feel about that versus in Chinese culture it might be considered rude to talk too much and here we're kind of emphasizing the more extroverted personality type. So keep that in mind if your students seem a little bit cold or reluctant to speak. They might think that they're being polite. You really want to take that cultural sensitivity, keep that in mind. So what do you do? How can you help your students speak if they are being introverted or reluctant, whatever it may be? What you want to do right away, you can usually sense it in class, the moment they enter the class, just through their tone or the first question that you ask them, how they respond. So they might just give you a one word answer and it might sound a little robotic. So when I get that tone or that feeling right away, I immediately set my own tone and I type it out for them. Now we're assuming that this is for intermediate or advanced students. What I do is I'll type out my expectations and I'll say something like, at this school, and I try to make it like a blanket statement purposefully because I want them to know that this isn't just about my class, this is how we do online ESL at this specific school wherever you're teaching. Because generally speaking, at all the online ESL schools in China, they always promote the student speaking more than the teacher. In fact, they want you to they want the students to speak 60-70% of the time, depending on their level, maybe even more. So I'll say at this school, we want the student to speak more than the teacher. I mean, doesn't that right there speak volumes? That's gonna let them know what the expectation is. Then I'll give them an example. I want to set them up for success. So I'll tell them. For example, when I asked you that question just a second ago, like maybe I said, what's your favorite sport? And they just say something like basketball. And they don't, they don't take it any further. So then I'll say, okay, you could say something like, my favorite sport is basketball because I really enjoy competitive sports and it's a chance for me to play with my friends. So I'll show them what I'm looking for. And again, you want to type it out. Or if you don't have the option to type on a whiteboard, you could just uh, write it on your own physical whiteboard. That shows them exactly what you're looking for and how to do it. Now, are they going to be perfect? Are they going to be next level, outgoing, or whatever? No. It takes time for a person to adjust to a new style. And of course, doing this in a foreign language, it can be even more intimidating. So what you might see is like a minor improvement or maybe 
an average improvement, whatever it may be. It's not going to be 100%, but that's okay. So as long as they improve a little bit and they start speaking more. Now when I've done this, I actually have seen pretty good results. I've seen the students participate way more than what they might have done had I not said something like that in the beginning of class. So always approach it right away, take care of it, set the tone, set that expectation, and that should help you see major improvements. Moving on, I want to talk about when you have a student with a rude or cold attitude, because this is different than somebody who's shy or introverted. Sometimes you have people who are quite rude, they don't want to participate at all, not because they're shy or not because they're trying to be respectful. So in that situation, again, you want to let them know that you notice that. Don't engage it though, there's a difference. So what I say, and you can take this, take a note on this, write it down, use it, totally. This is for you guys to take and run with. So I will actually say, are you okay? You seem upset, and I'll look at them like that in the camera. Maybe I, maybe I don't even see their, maybe they're not like showing their face on camera. So I will talk to the camera if I don't get to see their face, and I'll just say, it seems like you're not okay, what's going on? And that'll kind of like make them perk up, and then they will be like, oh, she's not going to put up with that. or you know, he or whoever you are. <laughs> so just kind of putting the problem back on them really makes them see like, okay, you know, this person isn't going to put up with that. And then if they, if they still kind of act cold, I'll say it again. I'll be, and then maybe I'll switch to something like, do you like English class? It seems like you don't want to be here. And maybe they'll actually say, no, I don't like English class. Or they'll let you know what's wrong or what's bothering them. And that's a good thing because then you have a strategy. You know how you can help them. And if they say, no, I don't like English class, I'll be like, oh, that's too bad. You know what, though? We're here. So we might as well enjoy it. Let's try to get through this together. And at least you know then, it's not about you, it's not personal, they just don't like English. So you might not get the answer that you want, but you'll get some answer and that helps you move forward and kind of like not take it personally. That's why you wanna put it back on them and ask them like, what's going on? Are you okay? Do you not like English? So it, it puts it back on them. So that's for rude or cold students. Now, what about hyperactive or distracted students? This is a fun one, right? We get little kids and sometimes they're just all over the place. They don't have an adult next to them. They might be playing with a toy, playing, playing with a pet. And you know what? It's okay. It's okay that they do that some of the time. So what you wanna do when they're distracted is go with the flow. Just allow that to happen but then like, you know, you can take your own props or your own stuffed animals, whatever you have that you think they'll like and interact with them. And then you could kind of shift it back to the lesson, transition, and maybe have your puppets read or your stuffed animals read. And then the student has their stuffed animals read and they start role playing. I had a student one time that she was so into it we almost were not going to finish the lesson because she started having her stuffed animals pretend to be students. One was a teacher. My stuffed animals were the students in her other stuffed animals class. And she kept asking questions. And you know what? Did we veer off from the lesson a little bit? Yes, that's okay, like I said. But you do want to make sure you finish your material. So if it gets to a point where you feel like you're not going to finish, then you want to kind of say, all right, you know what? Say the student's name. Let's say the, the student's name is Sue. You know what, Sue? We got to finish these last three pages. So let's go. Ready? Put that learning hat on, whatever you want to say. Make it interesting and exciting for them and then they will help you out because you kind of catered to them for a little bit and they're much more willing to be flexible when you've met them halfway. So just meet the students halfway when they're hyperactive or distracted 
and don't give up. Just know that you cannot change a person on the other side of the world. It's already difficult to change people in general, but you know, when we're, we're, we're working remotely, it's even more difficult to have that physicality, obviously, and to control the classroom. So sometimes we just have to kind of be flexible. You don't want to put up with things, so you got to meet halfway. And it really does serve you in the end if you're willing to do that because the kid recognizes that you are working with them, not against them. So build that relationship with them. The two most important things in, in online ESL teaching, I have another live about this, is connection and correction. So when you connect with people, whether they're rude, whether they're distracted, whether they're shy, people will always warm up to you. But remember, it takes people time. It's not gonna happen overnight. You might work with a student for six months and suddenly you start seeing such a huge change in them. It, it can take a year or whatever for people to really grow, mature, whatever it may be. So always keep that in the back of your mind too. And then another thing that I tell people is be easy, like don't go so hard. Don't be too hard on yourself because it can really, you can you can really kind of beat yourself up when you, maybe you get a low rating or you, you feel like the class was a total failure. But if you have put your best foot forward, you've tried all the strategies, there's only so much we can do, right? So don't beat yourself up as long as you have put in your best effort, all right? And I will see you guys again next week. So thank you so much for joining me. And if you didn't know, I go live every Friday at 11.30. I did start a little bit early today, but you can catch this here. And then I also put an edited version on YouTube. So see you guys next time. Bye.